Good evening. This is Sarah Berman with Practically Writing, Episode 5. Today I am going to be doing some Q&A, so hopefully this will answer most of the questions you guys have. This will be the first of several Q&A episodes, but today I'm going to focus on the most common questions I get asked. If you have any questions that you'd like me to answer next time, make sure you leave a comment below. Let's get this party started. Question number one, when did you decide you wanted to be a writer? For me, this is easy, always. I've always wanted to be a writer. The first time I ever tried to put pen to paper to create a cohesive plot, I couldn't have been more than eight years old. I've been getting published since I was a teenager. I've had stuff in everything from newspapers to anthologies to literary magazines to my book. Question number two, where do you get your ideas for books? Uh, everywhere, the dinosaur tells me. Seriously though, all kinds of places. I have story ideas that came to me from, you know, things that I've seen on TV and in movies, things that I've read dreams that I've had, even things that people have done that, you know, I just noticed. I, I'd say that the better question is, how do you know when an idea is going to be a good book? And the best way to answer that is, does it get you excited? I love so many of my story ideas, and those are the ones that are going to get turned into books really fast. The other ones, you know, there's something there, something may come of it, but not really quickly. It's about the passion that you put into the story and the things that get you excited are going to translate well into a story that excites other people. Question number three, what do you do when you're not writing? I don't understand the question. Honestly, I spend most of my time writing or marketing my writing or researching the marketing for my writing or researching things for my writing. I'm not on Facebook. What are you talking about? Or pretending that I should be writing. Question number four. What does your family think of your writing? This one's a hard one because so many writers have families that are less than supportive of their writing. I'm actually really, really lucky. My husband is 100% behind me, like, all the time. I tell him that I'm writing and he's like, okay, I'll take care of the kids. I tell him that I wish I was writing and he's like, okay, I'll take care of supper. I tell him that I'm only pretending to be writing and he's like, Hey, sometimes you gotta play Minesweeper. I love him. My kids are a little young yet to really understand the nuances of the writing life, so they hardly count. My parents are supportive, but I don't think that they really understand the reason that people do things like writing. They're, they're very practical, down-to-earth people. So, you know, to them, a job is a job is a job is a job. And you go there and you work and you make money. And, you know, whether you enjoy it is kind of secondary. The idea that people do these things that they love, then try to make money off of that, is kind of... Yeah, they, they, they don't really get it. But they try to be supportive, and so... Yay. Question number five. What do you find is the most difficult part of writing? Mostly it's the fact that I am the only person who determines if I'm going to be writing right now, if I'm going to be doing something else right now. There's no external driving force. That can be both extremely freeing and extremely well, you just kind of feel like you're untethered, like you're throwing things 
at the wall and trying to figure out what's going to stick and it can become very directionless very quickly. Being organized is a really great way to get past that, but you still have to really dig in and find the, the motivation inside yourself. That means that self-care is extremely important for an author and it's also something that authors tend to ignore. So it can end up leading to a lot of uh, burnout. Question number six. No, what is the hardest part about writing? Oh, plotting for me. It's hands down plotting. I really have no difficulty getting dialogue out. I have no difficulty doing descriptions. Um, I'm actually a pretty concise and Spartan writer, so I tend to, I, I like things to happen in kind of like little compact sound bites, and getting a plot down for a larger piece is pretty much an absolute necessity if I'm going to get it done. Otherwise, I just write a whole series of really cool little scenes that don't do anything and they don't go anywhere and nobody wants to read that. Plotting was the the biggest hurdle that I had to go over and I'm not good at hurdles. Number seven, overwriter or underwriter? Well, like I said before, I'm a pretty concise writer. I am definitely an underwriter. I get the bare bones out and then look for ways to expand my plots and subplots into a more boisterous, curvaceous novel. Question number eight, plotter or pantser? Definitely plotter. I gotta have direction. I gotta. I am a writer who needs a GPS and it doesn't matter if I map it out myself. Wait, I do. I have to have a direction to go in, otherwise I just kind of fumble around and it's just a hot mess. So there you go. Plotter. I do think it's important to understand that some people are pantsers and some people are plotters and some people kind of do this like sort of half and half thing. I, I personally do, I think that pantsing and plotting are a spectrum, not an either or thing. So the whole in the middle thing kind of wigs me out because it's like, well, okay, so you're kind of a planner who lets some things go to chance. Join the club. I think there's a lot of defensiveness and conflict between writers who are pantsers and writers who are plotters. And I think that's just completely silly. It's nobody's brain works like mine. My brain doesn't work like anybody else's. I'm assuming most people's brains work differently from each other's. So it, it's a silly argument to have. You find what works for you. Period. End of story. The end. And question number nine. What are you working on now? I'm being kind of naughty right now. I am writing a paranormal erotica. It's kind of kinky and it's kind of dirty and it's kind of... Actually, I've gotten a lot of compliments on the plot line for it. I think good erotica has a plot, so there you go. I think I'm doing it right. I hope I'm doing it right. I actually write my erotica and romance under a pseudonym, so... Uh, even though I will be giving updates to this particular work, it will not be under my name per se. And I have various reasons for doing this, so um, I'll probably address those in a different vlog. And finally, question number 10. What was the hardest scene you've ever had to write? Wow, that's a hard one. The ones that were the hardest to get out, I would have to say that it was a tie between the erotica scenes and the dark soul meditation scene in Fluffy Bunny. The erotica scenes are difficult because, I'm telling you right now, if you plan on writing erotica and you're not sure how to get yourself into, you know, writing those scenes, don't worry about it. I mean, the thing is, you feel like a moron the entire time. It's like, what am I doing? 
you're trying really hard to use all the right terms and they feel foolish and you just you feel like an idiot the entire time i guarantee it write it anyways people love reading that stuff the dark soul meditation that was really hard because that's one of the things that has been very central to my personal spiritual journey and I've actually done that particular meditation on several occasions. I've even taught workshops on how to do this meditation. It's hard every single time. I, I cannot explain how hard it is to face all of the things that you hate about yourself and the things that are less than perfect and the things that are what you see as failures and what you see as flaws and in order to really nail down Nicola's experience, I really had to dig into my own personal experience of doing that meditation. And to this day, I cannot read that scene, even in editing, for any reason whatsoever without crying. So, it was emotionally harsh. These are the sacrifices that an author makes for the audience. <laughs> I'm broken. You should appreciate it. Well, I think that'll be it for this week's episode. Uh, don't forget to find me on Facebook, Sarah Berman Author, or you can also find updates to all of my work on the Rune Spells series fan page. You can follow me on Twitter, Author Goddess. You can follow my blog, Author Goddess. You can check out my website, Author Goddess. Try to be consistent. And don't forget to pick up your copy of Too Weird. It is available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble in paperback and ebook formats. Remember to hit the thumbs up below and check out the links in the description. We'll see you next time. I'm coming out, so you gotta get this party started. I'm a procrastinator. I love him.